There are three important concepts that we have to cover. The first one is that of shaders. Shaders in Unity are scripts that describe the mathematical calculations required to determine what colors should be shown on the screen, what color should each pixel be. So when you see your game, it is a shader what determines what exactly you see according to the light and to other settings. A material, on the other hand, is what defines how a surface will be rendered or drawn on the screen. And a material has a shader associated with it. So a material has a shader and depending on the shader, there will be certain options, certain parameters that you have to enter. Some of these parameters might be the values of different colors, it could be other, other numbers, or it could also be different textures. A texture is simply an image, a bitmap image, and depending on the shader, a shader might require a few images. So basically, to summarize, a shader is a script that is written in a language called HLSL, and that shader will require certain parameters, certain textures, and it is the material where we specify all of those things. When we create a material, we assign a shader to it, and then we enter all these things, and then we can assign this material, give this material to a 3D model. For example, you can create a cube, create a material, and then you can assign that material to the cube. Let's go to Unity and create our first material. So in Unity, I'm gonna start by creating a cube, which will have, uh, to which we will assign a material. In my project view, I'm going to create another folder here, which I'm going to call materials. I like to organize my projects in this way. So I'm going to enter that folder and I'm going to right click and go to create and select here material. So I'm going to create a new material. And I'm going to call this material, we can call it something like a basic material. So if I select this material here, you will see all the properties of this material in the inspector. The first thing to select is the shader that's going to be used. Unity comes with a shader called the standard shader, which is a very flexible and robust and efficient multipurpose shader. So that is the one that we are going to be using. There are other shaders for other purposes, but we will be using and covering the standard shader here. And there are a few parameters here that we have to enter. The albedo is a, is a very important concept. So let me explain what that is. You might have heard the word albedo when, uh, if you've studied astronomy. So the albedo is the proportion of the light that reflects back. So different materials have different albedo values. But in Unity, actually albedo means something different. It, it doesn't mean the percentage of the light that is reflected, it actually sets a base color for the surface. So in simple terms, it is the base color of the material. So let's go and select a color. So I'm, I'm, I click on the color there and I get this color picker so I can pick any color I want. And once I've selected a color, you can see that your material now has that albedo color. And I can drag my material to the cube to assign that material. If I click on the cube, and you will see that the, the cube and all elements that you create that, that are obviously visible, like a cubes or all the primitive cylinder spheres, they all have a mesh render, which is a component that determines how that particular game object is, is shown, it's drawn on the screen, it's rendered on the screen. So you can see here that in materials, we actually see our material. If we create a new cu cube, and I'm gonna move it away, you can see that by, uh, by default, the cube has something called a default material. So our first cube is, uh, is uh, it has the material that we've created for it. There are two other parameters here that are very important, the metallic and the smoothness value. The metallic parameter specifies how much the material will reflect its environment, as opposed to just showing its albedo color. The smoothness simulates a microsurface on the material and that affects how it reflects light. So the more smooth it is, the, the more even the reflection is going to be. 
and we're going to talk about emission in a little bit. The best way to get a feel of what these parameters do is actually to try an experiment. But if you need some help, there is a very useful material chart in the Unity documentation that explains how you can easily achieve different effects, what sort of color you need on your albedo, and then what parameters you can set on your metallic and smoothness. Now let's go to Unity and have a play with these things. Before modifying those things, what I would like to do is actually add a couple more things here. So I'm going to add a plane that we can position underneath these elements. And I also want to add a second light. As you know, we have a directional light, which is light that comes from this direction as shown here. And I, want, I would like to add a point light, which is light that comes from a single point. So I'm going to add, I'm going to right click and go to light, point light. It's created a light here. As you can see, the light has a transform component that we're already familiar with and a light component, which is what makes that light a point light. I'm going to drag that here and I'm going to change the color of that light to something else, so like something like green, so that I get something a bit more interesting. And there should obviously be some reflection on the ground. Um, I've created another material here called ground material, so I'm going to select a color for that material. Let's make it brown and uh, just put, position that in there. Okay, so let's go back to our basic material and play with these uh, metallic and smoothness parameters. Out of both parameters, I find smoothness the one that's the easiest to understand because you can easily visualize surfaces that have like a microsurface on them, for example, the ground or a blanket. And those surfaces will usually reflect light in a way that is not so um, concentrated. For example, if, if we set this, you can see compared that when it is when this is very smooth, it looks like a billiard ball pretty much. And also the, the light tends to be more concentrated. Whereas when it's set to, to a low number, it can resemble more the kind of surfaces that, that have this characteristic. The metallic value, um, it makes a bit more sense. It, the, the more metallic it is, the more that it reflects the environment. When you can really appreciate the metallic value is when you have, for example, a skybox. So if we look up, we can see that this sky is pretty, it's pretty boring, right? Like it's very plain. But if we had a skybox with clouds and more elements, you would be able to, you, by using the metallic value, you could reflect some of the stuff and um, it would make, a, it would become a bit more intuitive. But as you, as you play with these parameters and also keep that chart in mind, you can achieve a lot of uh, very good looking materials. The other property here that I want to cover is emission. A material that has emission is a material that emits its own light, basically. So let me create a new material. So I'm going to go and add a new material. I'm going to call this emissive material. And by the way, the ground, I think the ground should have a low value of smoothness. And then it, it looks a bit better when you set like a bit of a higher metallic value here. So that's that's uh, my opinion when it comes to grounds like this. Anyway, back to emis emission. Um, we have to activate the emission here and then we can set the value that our that that will uh, of the light that it will be emitted, the color. So we've set that to green and we can also give it an albedo color. And as you can see, that looks kind of radioactive. So if we create if we, we can assign it to this one here. This is actually emitting some light. Um, if you played with more advanced lighting options that we'll cover later in the course, you can actually get this to show this light and to really illuminate, illuminate this environment. So that happens when you do something called baking lights. Another property here that's interesting to discuss is transparency. So I'm going to go and create a sphere move that somewhere here and create a material that we have that will have transparency. So I'm going to go create, create a material. I'm going to call this glass material. So for our glass material, we can give it an albedo color, for example, five. 
and then you can play with this um, alpha color, but it's not gonna work unless you go here and in rendering mode and check on transparent. You check on transparent and then you can set the alpha channel and that will give it the transparency. So if we drag this into, onto here, we can easily see how our sphere is, is transparent or semi-transparent. So in that way, you can achieve that effect. And the fifth type of uh, material that I wanna that I wanna build here is a material that uses a texture, an external image file. So let's call this sand material. And what I need to do is import an external image file. So I'm gonna create a new folder here called textures. And if I go to my file explorer, I already have a few textures that we can use. These are all open source things. I think I got this one just from the GIMP program. Um, but if you search, there are a lot of open source and free textures that you can use and also premium textures. So the way to import this is as simple as simply dragging, whoops, dragging the file onto Unity. If you click on it, you'll see that this is a texture and there are some options here. We will leave all of these uh, in, in, in its default. So let's go to our material and I wanna give that material to the floor so that it, we make it sand, sandy floor. Um, by clicking on that circle next to albedo, we can bring up this menu with available textures. So I'm gonna click, uh, select the sand. And at first you can see that it doesn't look too good because it's expanding the image to cover all the whole area and this sand texture is meant to be repeated multiple times in such an area. So the way to work with that, the way to fix that, is to go to tiling underneath emission. Tiling has nothing to do with emission, by the way. It's just located very, very near. And this is the number of times that the tile or the texture will be repeated. So if I change, for example, to on X, um, we are repeating it on, on X, on the X axis. We're repeating it twice, but just once on a Y. So as you can see, it's all stretched. It looks horrible. So what if we do that on a Y as well? That looks a little bit better. We have we have now uh, four times the texture. And if we, if we do it three times, that looks much, much better. And let's do four. And just to show you, like if you, if you add too many, it kind of looks weird because it's just repeated too much. So I, I found that four looked, looked okay in this case. So I'm gonna leave it at four. And we could also, if you, we could also, we can also play obviously with these parameters. So if we don't like the way that the that the light is being reflected or anything like that, you can just find the sweet spot, find whatever works for you. And you can also set an albedo color if we wanted this to have a bit of a Mars kind of Martian aspect. We could we could change it to like red, and that will give us our Martian soil. And so we have all different types of elements here. We have this sandy material um, that you can be like, yeah, in real life, sand is not smooth, but sometimes you just have to, in, in Unity, you just have to go with whatever kind of looks best. So I guess it could be more like that. That's a bit more realistic, yeah. And then we've got this other ground material that basically had like a very low smoothness. Then we have the transparent material. And we also had an emissive material, like a radioactive cube. And this original material is the one that it was made kind of like a billiard ball, like very metallic, very, very smooth. Um, so what we're gonna do now is um, go to the challenge and the challenge will be a bit different in this case. So the challenge will basically replicate everything we've done in this lesson, but without you obviously looking at the, at the lesson. So trying to do it on your own, you can always just look at the lesson again to uh, find out how any of these things are done. And of course, do check the documentation that I pointed out. So create a new project in Unity, create five cubes or, or five uh, primitive shapes, can be spheres or cylinders, a plane, create five materials and start with the basics. So start by just simply setting a simple color, just change the albedo, then start playing with the metallic with smoothness to create something that's looking like metallic, kind of like that billiard ball that we created. Then create your own emissive material, your own radioactive material, and create a semi-transparent material, something that looks like a glass, and end up by creating
creating a material with a texture. So use any image that you want. And um, you can, of course, download the solution that is basically the, the files that I just, the, the project that I just put together. So you can use that sand. It's open source as well. 